All right, we're off on a little adventure today. Today we're going to head out to Ottawa State Park where we're going to visit our friends Brian and Linda. And you might remember them because they actually visited us in Las Vegas a couple years ago. And then recently they visited us in uh, the Fort Myers area. They had a place in um, Cape Coral. That's actually where Mark did his infamous water ballet. But we're heading out to Ottawa State Park to visit them now. They have a fifth wheel and they usually in the summertime get around Wisconsin, some of Michigan. But recently Linda retired and Brian works from home. He always has. So they're pretty flexible on where they can go. So now that Linda has retired, they thought they'd try something different since they have the time and flexibility. So they're at Ottawa State Park and they're doing the camp host thing. So that's something that we've never done before and we're curious about it. So we think we're gonna, we're gonna head out there and talk to them, find out how it's going, find out how they got into it and uh, get a lot more information on what the camp host is all about. So as you can see, we're still waiting on Mark, but that's okay, we're used to it by now. I know he'll be out here pretty soon. <whistles> ah, there he is. You know, <laughs> I could hear you talking about me, and I'm your husband, and I'm like <laughs> right in beside that window there, and I could Aww. hear you saying that you're waiting for me. But in a loving way, though, yeah. we understand. We're but you know, it. like everybody can tell right now, looking at me, they're going, "Oh my God, he turned out really good this morning." <laughs> And, it was worth the wait. You know, I, I have a lot of extra primping to do. I mean, you're just naturally good looking, you know. <laughs> like, I've got all sorts of hairs One and everything. One thing you there. forgot. What? Straighten your glasses out. Oh. There, there you go. Okay. Oh, well, I all put right. that on because I've got so <laughs> many cameras and things that I'm taking, Woo! you know, through the YouTube you too, baby. to remember all of the things to take along, all of the batteries, all of the cameras, hope that we have everything. Come on over this way. I find it kind of funny that we're the ones with a channel and yet we're kind of like a one-stop pony here where we just ended up buying this Dutch Star and we're pretty much one and done. Brian, on the other hand, actually is the real camper out of all of us, uh, him and um, Linda and you'll find that out when you get to meet them later today now Brian ended up buying three rigs so far and if he were to have bought in three brand new rigs he'd be in a poor house right now but in fact Brian did it smart he did a lot of research he decided that he thinks he wanted to go this way and the first thing he bought was a class C and he got it was in perfect shape he got it at a really competitive price. He bought it private. He used it, I think, for a year or two. He ended up selling it, and he either didn't lose 10 cents on it or made a few bucks slightly. Then he ended up buying a travel trailer, and he bought that used. He got that for a good deal. He married it up with a truck. Uh, and then after he had that for a few seasons, then he decided to go bigger and grander and now he's got a fifth wheel which we'll see shortly and he's got a different truck for that uh, so so far Brian has been blessed with his research and uh, good purchases along the way and hasn't went to the poor house and that's why Sue and I aren't selling it because we figure if we save if we drive this thing for a hundred years and then we sell it our cost per year is going to really be low Always. Yeah, water and and this ain't my this isn't my debris here, but the good RVer that I am, I'll pick it up and I gotta desanitize myself later. <laughs> so uh, we're on our way to Brian and Linda's uh, campground where they're camp hosting, and I gotta share with you, you know, Sue and I are kind of sitting on our can in our class A motorhome kind of hiding like a lot of people because of the pandemic. Uh, I mean Sue's a little bit more confident in her health 
uh, than I am. I'm 68. And as I'm looking over here at my Garmin, and I'm looking at the speed and the speed limit and everything, I, I had this rush of feeling of what it's like to be traveling again. And I got to be honest with you that I really, really miss it. Um, it just so happens that today's Thursday and on Saturday we're actually going to be moving because we're going to move from Milwaukee to Indiana. We're going to Napanee to the mothership at Newmar and we'll have some good footage there hopefully of what it's like to be in the Newmar factory uh, getting repairs and what it's like to stay there. Uh, but I'm sure we'll have a little excitement there even though we're going to the factory to spend a pile of money, at least we got an excuse to travel and we don't have to feel guilty that we're going around uh, traveling uh, un, you know, unneedlessly. And trust me, we'll be safe. We even have masks here when we're driving. If Sue starts coughing, I'm wearing this baby. Hand sanitizer. Yep. dump station over there on the way out because there is no uh, sewer here but let's say I was assigned that one uh, well I could probably get into that one I could go straight and I could get into that one honey we could be real campers uh -huh. so it is a Thursday and you can see that there's an awful lot of spaces during the week, even during the summer, we'll have to see how busy Brian gets today. You know, people setting up on Thursday so that they can hit it hard on Friday. See how it says ER? Yeah, what does that ER mean? It's the electric and you can reserve it. <laughs> ER. That's what I'm going with and I'm sticking with it. All right, thanks. So Brian's right across from the restaurants. These people are going to the lake. <coughs> oh yeah, they've got a nice lake here. Yep. Nice beach area, swimming. And there they are. Look at how hard a camp host works. <laughs> ah, they saw us. We're busting out. <laughs> Not working too hard, are they? <laughs> Not now anyway. All right, this camp hosting thing looks pretty darn easy. <laughs> what kind of work is that? Look how dirty my shirt is. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's awesome. We were working this morning. You got a so nice. Wait, wait, we have to show you our smoky. Look at the bear. 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 Oh, bear. Oh, bear. 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 excellent. It looks so nice with your shirt, too. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> this, is, this is a nice sight. Yeah. So we've got Willow here, all excited. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of fence is this, Willow? <laughs> I mean, it's open on one end. <laughs> so when you're a, when you're a YouTube creator and you constantly have to have something, you're always hoping that something interesting happens. And I have to be honest with you guys. Not only are you guys fun to be with and can provide us with something to talk about, but I can't tell you how many people are interested in this. And we have people that we follow on YouTube that did camp hosting, and Sue and I aren't quite men enough to do it. And you guys are, <laughs> and you're our professional <laughs> campers that we always emulate. Like, like, okay, in the three years that we've been camping, I don't think I've ever made a okay. fire. So once again, we'll get to experience that because they're real campers and we're not. How many hours are you guys committed to doing this? Well, thing? they asked for 15, 15 hours. Only. 15, that's 15 combined or 15 each? I'm not sure. We're not sure. It'd be really hard to put in 30 hours. 
Yeah. Well, so I'm thinking 15 for you, 15 for you at the same time. She right. said that counts. Right. So okay. she goes with me a lot and she'll do, um, she'll pick up the garbage to do the finishing touches while I'm doing the shoveling. We have a little dustpan and she'll finish it off. We have off. a little clipboard we have to and check And she helps me the... because my elbow is kind of shot. Well, Linda does look more down like the, the boss. Yeah. You didn't get that yeah. area right yeah. there. Yeah, I know. I was down, we're down at the beach. She goes, well, there's a paper over there. And she's under there, there, over there. I'm walking around, picking it all up. So, so we have those little cloth things. You know, oh, yeah. Just, so in, a, in high season, what is this? You can't. I know you can't rent this site because this site and the other full hookup site, the only two full there. hookup sites are the hosts. So this site literally is unavailable. That but was sitting here. Like the electric site, uh, electric and water sites, how much are those during high it's season? It's only electric. No state campground has in Wisconsin huh? has anything other than electric. You're kidding. Really? Not a single state campground. Wow. What, in all of Wisconsin. What what does the ER mean that's on the post? It used to be electric is the E yeah. and R means reservable. reservable. Because eh? they used to not be able to reserve all of them. They always left some unreservable. Yeah. Now that when they changed to the electronic system a year or so, yeah. everything's reserved. Oh, it was yeah. so silly. It was like rush in the morning, and they're all standing in line. Because um, every other state we go to, and apparently, even, you know, they have full hookup sub. Even the Army Corps of Engineers have a few. When they yeah. But taking that, all the parks are so old. They're so old. Yeah. You know, that they didn't have the infrastructure. For yeah. Them. Uh, and the only reason they could put these hosts here is because it's this great big tank here. Yeah, we have a oh, great big holding tank. tank here. And the yeah. other one was right by the dump station. Yeah, I so. never thought of that. It's not as simply as ditch witching in between them. And we were we were in here, and then with the COVID thing, they canceled all hosts yeah. at the first of the season. So it wasn't until late June they allowed hosts to come in. Yeah. And all of a sudden this was empty. And we just were driving through here a few weeks ago. Yeah. And so it's empty. Oh, my God. And the other one had one. And I saw one of the worker people here. He says, yeah, we need a host. Then go home. Poor Brian. He has to take off and work while we sit here and enjoy lunch. Oh, I'm thinking, take a look at Brian. I think he's going for surgery. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he... Have fun. She's melting in your arms. <laughs> I don't want to put my hand in appropriate, inappropriate places and have a problem. <laughs> Looks pretty comfortable though. Very comfortable. So while Brian's off doing his thing, we were just chilling out. And one thing I want to point out that camp hosts can come in a variety of different looks. We've seen people that were working in office, doing maintenance work. Um, actually even one person was a barista at a coffee shop in a campground. But for this small state park, the camp host was the person that would clean up the sites of the fire pits and pick up a little garbage in the area, sometimes even replace toilet paper or uh, soap in the restrooms. And then a little bit later, Linda and I decided to take their kayak out on Ottawa Lake. The Ottawa Lake campground is actually very beautiful and it's part of the Kettle Marine State Forest Southern Unit. It has a hundred sites which includes 65 electrical sites. Now, they don't have full hookup though. There's no sewer and there's no water, but they do have a dump station with potable water. They also have two shower buildings with flush toilets. So you gotta wonder, what is Kettle Moraine? And it's actually what makes this area so beautiful with the rolling hills. Moraine is a mass of rocks and sediment that were carried down and deposited by a glacier. And with this glacier came huge blocks of ice that were partially buried. So once the blocks of ice melted, there were these huge depressions that they call kettle. And sometimes the kettles would actually fill with water. And then you have a kettle lake. And that's what Ottawa Lake is, a kettle lake. You can see that Ottawa Lake has a really nice beach too. There's also an area that's designated just for pet swimming, which is really nice. They've got a pier, we saw some kids actually fishing on it also. Obviously, I worked really hard watching Brian and Linda work hard and it just it rubbed off on me. 
<laughs> You're tired now. So I'm tired now. Aww. This camp hosting, this is exhausting. <laughs> It might not look like I'm helping Brian, but I am because when, when he was pouring the charcoal in there, I told him, I said, okay, Brian, enough on the charcoal. So he's got it all topped off now. Off that they had burned it and got the grill real hot with the foil cleans it and makes it super hot so, so that the, all the meat seared right on there. So the foil? Now the foil I'm just scraping it off because I don't like using wire brushes. Yeah. Wire brushes leave wire. Yeah. You ever see when they're old? Where are all the wires? Yeah. Through. Yeah. So you put the foil on there to heat up the grill? Heat up that grill super oh, hot. Did you see all that smoke? Yeah. Before when the smoke stopped I knew it was done. Yeah. And I thought he was going to grill on it. So did I. No wonder our burgers don't ever turn out. I know, I don't heat it up. Ah, uh, that's the problem when you add stuff. So if you get what? flares, you can flame it out. What's your rule? You always have a drink in your hand so you can put out the fire if it gets too hot. Okay, we're very much aware that Linda and Brian, not Linda and Brian, it's Brian and Linda, have only been doing this for six days. But they truly are the only people that we know that ever had the intestinal fortitude that we know that did this. So, and what this is uh, camp hosting, and they're doing a volunteer camp host uh, position that allows them a full hookup site here in Ottawa State Park, is that correct? Correct. And they get their site for a certain amount of labor that they do, and we tried to follow around a little bit today and get uh, to show what you're doing. And what are your, just like your first impressions right now? It's uh, not all just sitting around, but mm -hmm. we, the, the, it's, we do clean out uh, fire pits, which can get this time of year dusty and yeah. a lot of ash, but it's not that bad. We can't stand time, but, but we really enjoy um, getting full hookups for free. <laughs> and but the, the it's fun answering questions to people. They come in there. All campers are good people usually. Yeah, um, they're conscientious people, and we like to help them out. We've well, been coming here for years as campers, so we know the park. We know the Southern Kettle Moraine, which is what this is. Mm -hmm. I even ask people, what's this kettle and what's a moraine, you know? And, yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, so answering questions like that and helping them do little things and help people. I had a gentleman had a little bit of a handicap and no car. He just had a motor home. He said, how do I get wood? I said, I'll go get you wood. You know? Yeah. He yeah. was really appreciative. When we started out our day today, we had to say something, you know, where we were going, and I told them a little bit about the research that you did and how well you were able to buy your rig so that every time you traded out of it and got something else, you either didn't lose anything or actually made money, so that's a genius move right, right from that point, but this literally is your third rig, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. The first yes. one was what? Uh, C-Class, Winnebago. Okay. About 30 foot, right? Right. And then how long did you have that? Two seasons. Two, two years. Two, two years. Yeah. And it's funny because they bought that right when Sue and I are studying and we're studying and studying and they just study and buy it and they're already doing it <laughs> and we're just talking about it. So we were still phonies at that point. And then from well, we're on the Class A route. I went right. and tested Class A's, yeah. okay. and then I said, that's crazy, we're yeah. going to do a fifth wheel, yeah. makes the most sense, because I didn't want this giant Class A, and then I saw the truck I had to have, Yeah. 
and we live in a condo where you can't have trucks outside, and the dually truck wasn't going to fit in the garage. Right, and Brian probably would have got that right from the get-go, but yeah. he has a restraint uh, in terms of the height and length, and the, height. the yep. fit, and they got a beautiful condo. They're certainly not going to sell that, you know, just to be able to. And they didn't want to pay more storage fees for yeah. the truck and the thing, and drive this big dually diesel around for my driver. Mm -hmm. um, so we settled on the Class C motorhome. Okay. So then you were in that two seasons, and then what? And then we decided that we wanted didn't want another vehicle to tow behind us because we're not full timers yet. Okay. We weren't seasonal even at when we weren't snowbirds, but that was our long term plans. Yeah. And we figured we'd learn around, go around the country, maybe do hosting or work camping, and blah blah blah. And we thought that the let's go with a travel trailer. Okay. Because we didn't want another vehicle, because we each have a vehicle plus something we'd have to tow behind. Uh, the motorhome, so we switched to the trailer. And that was a pretty long one. It was a it? very long trailer. Very long. <laughs> Too long. It was beautiful. A lot of room inside. Side. I mean, you could have a dance in there, tons of kitchen counters and cabinets. Mm -hmm. But we learned the hard way that it, because we're not ready to go on the road yet, it wasn't conducive to the traditional state campgrounds. Mm -hmm. it, we made it in every one, but it was a challenge towing it. Yeah. And with it, I had a F 150 and uh, had the biggest hitch in the world to manage it, and it still was okay. always a challenge. Yeah. We had that two seasons. Okay. And um, sold that, and uh, 2500 uh, Dodge Ram with mm -hmm. the big Hemi engine. That's a whole other story, and why I didn't go diesel. Yeah. And started finished the season with tra to towing the trailer, much improved, but I knew I was selling it. So yeah. we're going to get this bigger truck to tow the trailer, but we're going to go to a fifth wheel, something different. Okay, and so I had missed that. You did tow the pull behind with this truck. At the end. At and the how end. much better was it? Like, much better. Much, much better. better. Much better. Okay. As great as the Ford is and the 150, and we had the we tow package and the, <laughs> and the 10-speed and the big engine, mm -hmm. it just was too much behind that truck. Yeah. Is this one got a longer wheelbase? Yes. And okay. And much higher in the back. All right, so then you He's got rid of the spring, so trailer, and then what did you do? Yeah. Sold the trailer and then I started looking at fifth wheels all over, yeah. finding that right deal again. So, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I love this combination uh, of. I haven't hit the mountains yet, and I may regret it then. But we live in the Midwest. Yeah. It, this uh, toes. This combination toes so well. Mm -hmm. We don't even know it's back there. It's yeah. scary sometimes. Oh. I have to be cognizant of that. I have a trailer. I have 34 feet behind me, yeah. you know, or well with the fifth wheel, not quite that much. You talk to people that have de uh, dualies, it's always, you are always aware of how big you are. Yeah. And when it's also your toad, uh, there has to be a trade-off. And if you have enough trailer behind you that you need that dually, then you have to just accept that trade-off because you have to do it safety. You know, you can't have it both ways a lot of times. After six days, would you say that you would do this again here, maybe in the future, or would you do it at other places, or like, are you done already? No, I, oh, no. I we, we find it very interesting, and yeah. we love talking to the people, and people are so appreciative. Yeah. You know, they just thank you profusely for helping them, and and you know yeah. doing things for them and and uh, we enjoy it we walk around the campground and we check you know make sure everybody's okay and it's mm -hmm. kind of like our thing you know i can yeah. see it's only been six days people mm -hmm. who are here months i can imagine how yeah. attached they get to like it's their home yeah. Yeah. the superintendent's name is ann and she runs a lot of properties in wisconsin southeast wisconsin here state properties and she's just been a real pleasure to work with and she helped us go through the process of and been checking on us to see how we like hosting. What more do you want to do? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to get safety related on the lawnmower equipment? You yeah. know? And she's checked and I talked to her and she helped me convince to give this a trial. Yeah. I mean, she'd so, love to have us for a month and a half or two months. Normally, they won't even talk to you for a week. Oh. They yeah. want you yeah. at least a month or two. It, it's yeah. like My a, question is, how did you guys even come about wanting to do this and what was your process to get here? Well, we've well always, you guys we've somewhat. About it. Yeah, <laughs> you guys, we knew we couldn't full time and just sit, mm -hmm. and and we'd love to be vacation all the time, but that wasn't realistic for us. We knew we wanted to complement it with something, and with you guys going off and doing it, it you're kind of like our you know we lived through uh, vicariously through you guys, 
what you do, but we started looking up work camping, mm -hmm. you know, and hosting. And so it's something like everything I spend time researching and doing. Then I started talking and talking to more people and mm -hmm. um, it just, we knew it was something we wanted to do. So I said, I'm getting closer, I'm getting less work. Yeah. And now is a better time to do it. And Am I uh, correct that you basically have to build a resume? Yes. Okay. Yes, and they do get rid of them if they're not doing their job. Yeah. If people complain in that, and they, you do get, um, I think, more opportunities if you're liked yeah. and if you get um, recommendations yeah. and if people compliment you. And so it's the same old thing where you're kind of at the short end of the stick. You have to, if you get somebody that's not exactly a stand-up person, you got to kind of dance around a little bit to get the get what the, whatever the issue is fixed without being too confrontational right we're definitely not any way shape or form do any law enforcement no yeah we don't tell people they're doing things wrong we don't you know we, i mean it might be very minor you know hey you're going the wrong way on a one-way street be careful or, yeah you know things like that we have wardens here. We have rangers. Mm -hmm. Our job is to tell them if something gets they have, confrontational. They have wardens and rangers. And rangers. Sure. How far away are they? Well, they cover well, they all the southern, what they call the southern forest in Wisconsin here. Yeah. So it's the southern Kettle Moraine, Lapham Peak. But we're not law enforcement. We're hosts. We're, we're PR people. Yeah. Right. And uh, we help out with, and you know, we pick up branches. I cut things that are covering signs and we... We even help with the bathrooms. I mean, yeah. we're not maintenance people, we but, don't if, clean. but if <laughs> we have to pick up something, we do yeah. it. We have to replace soap and toilet paper, we do it. Well, right. in a month from now, you'll see that we're going to be camping right down the road from them, literally like four miles. We'll probably be at their place numerous times, but then they're going to come to where we are for two days for full hookups, cleaning out and dumping and the whole thing. And if after being one week out in real camping, if Sue and I don't become better real campers, you will know that those two are a failure <laughs> and they weren't able to convert us. <laughs> so this is only one of many ways that you can camp host. And as Brian said, he started his by just researching and talking to people. And truly, it, there's so many ways to do this lifestyle, whether it be full-time or part-time. And for us anyways, the expense of park fees, resort fees, is probably one of our bigger expenses. So this is one way to kind of offset it. And as Linda said, it's a great way to meet people of like mind.